I built this standing carving clamp using an old piece of scaffold board, an old fence post, some scraps of plywood and some scraps of oak. And uh, if you stick around I'll show you how I made it. I've glued up this little shelf now that's going to hold the carvings on top of it. It's loosely based on some stands for carving, uh, carving stands that I've seen online. Um, I didn't really have any clamps or any way to really squeeze these 
braces on to make sure the glue held properly so what I did was I just put a couple of screws down and through there and then a couple of screws through the back now that the glue is dried I've pulled the screws out and I'm gonna put some dowels in there instead and put some dowels in through the back you may be wondering what the reason is for this kind of um, oak insert that I've done in there the reason for that is because this screw is gonna go inside there and I wanted to have something a bit stronger than plywood for the screw to grip onto I think a screw going into you know plywood in the sort of end grain direction was probably not a good idea I could see the the, the plywood just kind of breaking apart so I, I thought I'd put some oak in there I don't know if oak's exactly the best thing ever but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be better than plywood so that's the reason I did that so now what I'm gonna do is drill a hole through the back um, get the thread in there properly, get the dowels in here to secure all the pieces and then I'm going to try out and see how strong it is on the actual clamp stand itself. All I have at the moment is this one wooden screw screwed into the platform on the other side holding it up uh, and I did a little bit of testing and I don't think it's going to be enough to hold it up by itself um, maybe if you got a proper vice screw like you have in the vice on your bench and use that that would work really well um, but because this is a wooden screw I don't know if it's going to hold it as tight so because of that I'm going to add another thing to the front which I'll show you now so what I'm going to do is uh, have another piece of this inch thick plywood and put it under here at 10 centimetre increments. So uh, this is the bottom one, then there'll be another one here, another one up here somewhere, another one here somewhere. Uh, and then I'm going to drill two holes through it, put these bolts with the washers through there, and then have some threaded inserts, these little doohickeys have some of those inserted into the plywood and I'm going to have five different stages of where I can use them so uh, let's start doing that now for a bit of added accuracy I've just added clamps onto both ends and now I'm just going to drill through and just add a little bit of an indication as to where the hole's got to go should be able to pull it off and have two fairly small marks there we go and then we can properly drill into those afterwards but first I'm going to mark all of them so all I need now is to get the threaded inserts in there so I'm going to use a little socket set here with a little hex piece on it so I can thread those in there and uh, it's pretty simple you push them in, I've got this the wrong way, hang on then you spin and it's good to have the ratchet because you know the handle here is hitting the bench so <laughs> but what I want to try and make sure of is that I get this past like I embed it a little bit right so it's a bit under the surface because things have to move over the top of it and it's just a case of screwing them in 
Another thing I was contemplating was not using these all and just using dowels. So this board would just have a couple of dowels glued into it where you could just position it in there every time, just slot it in. Uh, but I thought if I did it with bolts, it would, you know, be a lot stronger, be less movable. Maybe I'll cut the bolts down a little bit so there's less to screw in, we'll see. If you were to drill the, you know, power joy, you could just zoop, zoop, take those out and put them in, in and out pretty easily. So if we do the rest of the inserts in here, then uh, we'll do an overview of what the whole thing is like. So now I've got all this together, I'll give you a review of the various parts, how it attaches to the bench and how you would use it. So the first issue I had was how to attach this really long scaffold board to the workbench without it wobbling and shaking about all over the place. And I'll show you how I at least minimize the amount of shaking that happens. So what happens is this notch here accepts the top of the bench where it slots into. And then this fence post here clamps into my existing vise on the bench. And there's a screw down the bottom there that screws into the leg. I've actually made a thread in the leg of the bench that this fence post can screw into. So quite simply, the scaffold board has the opening here which slots onto the bench. Then I can push it up a little bit. So now the fence post is equal with the leg of the bench. Then I can turn the vise and tighten it up. But I have to think about the vise racking because uh, as I tighten up here, this part is going to want to go in further as well. So to stop that happening, I just simply made a quick kind of thing that goes in there. It's the same thickness as the uh, fence post. That goes onto there. Like that. So that's all locked in there. And now I can go down the bottom and tighten the screw up on the bottom. So it's going to be a little bit squeaky. But hopefully you can see as the screw goes in how these two posts are brought together. Here we go. It's probably useful to have some kind of a, you know, a stick or something there to turn that around, but it's fine. You know, you could easily do that with a drill and some kind of threaded rod as well. If you want to do it that way, have a nut in there and just drill the rod in and out quickly. Uh, but that was just the way I wanted to fix it to my bench. So I've taken this shelf off just to show you the various parts of it. It's got two pieces of inch thick plywood and in there I've kind of embedded two pieces of oak to act as a nut because I thought they'd be better to screw into than screwing into uh, plywood when it came to using a wooden screw. Then I've added some pieces of rubber on there to help grip against this uh, piece of scaffold board. And then there's these two pieces here to slot into the back here to stop it from twisting too much. I, I don't want the clamp to be able to do that so much. So these bits that are slotted in here help that um, slide up and down there and not twist side to side too much. So the shelf goes onto there. And then the wooden screw goes into the part that we threaded. That turns on there until we get nice and tight. There we go. That's the shelf all tightened up. And uh, now I'll take you around the front to show you that little block and why we did that. Now the reason for this little block here was to go directly underneath this to stop this from going downwards when I'm doing particularly heavy work on the top. I noticed when I was using this that when I did some heavy work it was shaking a little bit. So I thought I'd have a removable block so I can tighten up at the back and now I can hit down on top of that and this block is really doing a lot to stop this from going further down and you know taking some stress off the, the threaded uh, wood screw that we've got on the back as well so it's always good. So what I've done is I've made five different positions it can go into up and down the piece of scaffold board. And I, was po I would possibly say if you would make one of these your own that pine might not be the best idea for the big backing board you know if you can afford having a, a better piece of hardwood or something you know some oak or beach or something like that, I think it would probably be better than the pine that I'm using, but you know, I'm trying to use the stuff that I have to make something that will be functional. Lower it down to the block, 
till it sits on it. Then screw the back back up again. And there we go. So that's your carving base. Then you can put your carving on top. Uh, I've been, for the moment, just uh, clamping it down like this with a couple of clamps on each side. Then you can carve away to your heart's content. It helps me quite a lot because, uh, you know, less back pain. I'm not bending over my bench like this so much all the time. Also, if you want to look at a particular feature, you know, it can help to raise it up to eye level so you can really inspect what you're looking at. Uh, it's quite solid. You know, I'm sure it could be more solid. If I, uh, if I got a nice piece of wood and a sturdier bench and sturdier things to put it to, but I think it's pretty good for what it is, you know. It's uh, pretty cheap. Uh, and the only change I'm going to make to it at the moment is to attach this woodcarver screw at some point. I'll do a follow up video on that just to show you guys what a woodcarver screw is. I'm sure there's other videos on YouTube about it, but um, I'll give you guys a bit of a look into that and what it can do. So, in the future, I'll have this screw on there and I'll be able to spin this around so I can adjust it easily. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks a lot for joining me. If you'd like to see me using this clamp thing live, then come on to twitch.tv forward slash timber and you. I stream there quite often. And if this is your first time on my channel, please feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos. Thanks a lot for watching. So what I've decided to do is get a piece of plywood, another bit of this inch thick plywood. <laughs>